Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hard Tongue Family Farms. And I want to address something I didn't address in the last video. Just because I'm wearing this pukely ugly crap doesn't mean I like it. It means I got it for free and it's actually a really nice sweatshirt. So, just want to get that clear. Didn't address that in the last video. But anyway, today, we are going to be switching to corn harvest. The soybeans, in, in last video, like I was talking about card right here, they're just too dry. We're at 8%, we're roughly losing four bushels an acre just in lost moisture. I explained that more in that video, so go check that out later if you guys want. But, so today we're gonna switch over to corn. So let's, uh, let's get stuff rolling. We gotta get the, some bean meal delivered. We gotta get some corn moved. The dryer's running right now. A lot going on already. So let's get, got the dryer going. The wet bin has that bottom indicator, so it's at least two thirds full. Let's walk up and actually see how full it is right now. Can I see it's unloading? That's your unloading conveyor with the uh, Bluetooth safety shields on it. Thought I just got hit with some corn. Could be crazy. That's yeah, cone down there. That bottom indicator is about ready to go off. That's good. And stairs are much nicer than ladders, I will say that. So let's go back down. Just doing some looking over the combine, checking belts. Drain the oil overnight. So it goes up. Oh, right here. Also notice the belt's getting worn. Good girl, fertilizing the fields. That's what I like to see. So we're gonna take the 190, hook that on the baler. I think we're gonna make some stock bales today. So let's get this thing going. Come on, Izzy. Come on. Oh, you got a shtick. You got a shtick. You can keep your shtick. Come on. Playing the good old equipment shuffle today. Got to get the baler hooked up. This has been a long time in the making. So, we've had this leg here with two downspouts, one going to the silo, one going to the old wet bin for a while now. But we've always wanted to get every other bin hooked up to this. For sure, that one and that one. They both hold about eight to 10,000 bushels a piece because we want to make this our soybean hub at one point because eventually that harvest story is going to come down. You know, it's got that kink. Card of that video right here when that happened, that was interesting. But so eventually that's gonna come down. We're gonna put another big, big, nice and tall bin up in its place. So, but for right now, the company is actually going to put some downspouts on these bins. So it's gonna save us a lot of time and hassle, jossying augers around and everything like that. We could just set up the drive over like we do normally to fill that, to fill these two bins. It'll be golden. So they have this raw, raw set of pipe. They already measured. So they're just gonna basically cut the pipe, the size of pipe that's needed, and string them down to those bins. Like I said, it's a small project compared to putting up the leg and all that fun stuff, but it's necessary. You know, we already get the leg hooked up. You might as well do that for a relatively little cost, just a little bit of labor. We'll show you guys the finished product a little bit, but uh, you should see some, uh, some new hardware up there soon. So I'm going up to our local elevator and kind of warehouse that has ag stuff. And I'm getting another roll of net wrap because uh, we're gonna make about 500 corn stock bales. We only have one full one and that makes about 250 per. So gotta go do that real quick. Busy, busy place. Gotta love good local stores in and out in two minutes. Perfect, and they're two minutes away. Servicing, servicing. Come on, Daisy. Come on. So we're gonna all chains. Gonna start the PTO. You ready? Yep. So this baler does everything via PTO. The only hydraulics raise and lower the pickup and raise and lower the dump gate. Everything else is with the PTO. And we use it like the oil chains. In my opinion, we oil them a little too much, but rather be too much than too little with chains. And while we're doing this, Curtis is finishing, uh, changing the engine oil on the 7088. We'll see how many hours are on this unit. 
3,361 engine, 2,269 separator. 3361. 3361. Yep. Backer up to the rake to do that. Got to pull off these rear spears that I put on for one bale. It's fine. Not upset. And we'll hook it onto the rake. I see. Get your butt over here. There you go. Let's go hook this thing on the uh, rake. Gotta move this out of the way. Ah, I gotta love old 1970. That's yeah, Blackstripe, 1976 power. Still getting used just about every week on the farm. Too small, now I get a bigger one. So Curtis and I are gonna go start making corn stock bales. I'm gonna go rake, I got some waters, I got Daisy, I got Daisy's care package. Should be good to go. I gave Curtis a GoPro, he's gonna start bailing. So we'll see what all we can get to accomplish in my uh, short couple hours before I gotta head out. Wife and I got a hot date tonight, can't miss that. So those, those guys are checking out the combine. We're gonna switch to corn. I don't know exactly how we're gonna do it. We're a little bit short staff and a little bit short on trucks. Our third semi that uh, we rent from Jeff, he's uh, actually letting the local trucking company use it because their trailer, uh, they ordered two new trailers and none of them have come in yet. We're a little down on trailers. I'm not sure exactly how or what we're gonna do, but all I know is I'm gonna go rake. Raking these up. So we are raking corn stalks. We're gonna put them into bales because these are gonna be our bedding bales. And you guys have seen car to this video right here not too long ago I actually uh, made some bedding bales or we uh, bedded some cattle with these bales but all we do is just bale up we harvest corn like normal bale it up and then use it to our cattle give it to them over the winter whenever they need a bit whenever they need bedding it's essentially like uh, washing your sheets at home cattle go berserk when they see us do this when we give them these bales so here's the job I'm doing just taking all this light stuff Raking it into a windrow for Curtis to bail up. The cows are gonna love this stuff. All it is is just corn residue, corn trash. So now that's doing a pretty good job right there. You want a balance of getting as much as you can because that way you get more tonnage out of it, but you don't want to take in too much dirt. So just depending on how much of the corn stalks got rain over and all that such, it's fun stuff. I think I'm doing a pretty good job right now. And Curtis just joined us. So really there's no downside of doing this. I mean, this is free bedding for us, but I guess I should say there is a little downside because the corn stalks, if we would let it decay and decompose over winter and work it in if we would chisel it, this actually becomes organic matter and nutrients for the next crop for the crop for next year. So because we're taking it off, we're gonna have to rep replenish it. So we'll just do that by putting on a little bit more uh, P and K phosphorus and uh, potassium when we spread on with the regular rate. We'll put a little bit more to replace the nutrients we're taking off with the corn stock bales. Or we'll just spread a crap ton of manure on this and call it good. One of those two. First corn stock bale of the year. There it is. I bet he'll make about 70 to 80 in this bunch right here. We'll see how many he can do per pass. I've done six passes so far. So he just goes along, fills up a bale, and then his monitor tells him when he's got a full bale, he stops. It wraps, which it's doing right now, and then it'll yell at him, hey, I'm wrapped, and then he'll kick it out right about now. Now. Now, there it is. Kicks it right out. Perfectly foreign bale. Wow, <laughs> that one, that wrap ripped a little bit. So that one's not a perfectly foreign bale, but it'll work. Going down stock. It's a volunteer corn stock. That is done. So that's five bales. I'm gonna guess he's gonna get six and a half per. And I'm on row seven right now. So he can bale around that seven to eight mile an hour range. I'm raking around that 10 mile an hour and I don't have to stop. So I obviously can rake a crap ton more than he can bale. She's doing good. I'm honestly shocked at how well she's doing because she's high maintenance, hyper high energy at home. Take her out to the farm. Sit her in a tractor or a truck. Beautiful. 
Good girl, Daisy. Not your typical farm dog, Daisy the, uh, good job. Daisy the Aussie Doodle, but hey, she's cute and she's doing good. So Curtis said in a little bit of trouble, he's just got to adjust his baler. It's just kind of wrapping it too tight. He's got to back off the pressure. So he's got to make a couple phone calls to figure out how to do that. But while I, uh, I'm just going to keep raking. He doesn't need any help, so he says. So we'll keep the hammer down. I asked him, when I asked him, oh, uh, how much do you want to make? Or how many uh, do you want to keep going? He said, just keep going. So he's planning on bailing a lot today, I'm guessing. Oh, that one blew up. That one's going to blow up. No bueno. Well, that patch is finished up. So now I'll go uh, right here west of the cattle yard and get that raked. That's a good look right there. See how it's all, all the corn trash and fodder is all raked up into a windrow. Perfect. So there's not a whole lot going on right now, which is a, a good thing, honestly. I mean, nothing's broken. I'm just going back and forth. Yeah, not a whole lot. Uh, there is some new development. Daisy got tired of sitting around and bouncing around on that chair, so she moved over to my chair. What'd you do that for, dope? And the Hawkeyes were winning the football game. They were beating Ohio State because of our defense, not because our offense can score. But now it's 10-7 uh, with uh, five minutes left in the first quarter. I don't have any, I don't have high hopes for it. If I can, uh, if Iowa can make it a 20 point game, a 20 point loss, I'll take that as a win for us. Even though it won't be a win, it's fine. I will say it is nice that Pat is planning with GPS now because we have nice straight rows, so it makes my job really easy. I just pick a spot where a uh, tire ran over one of the stalks, and I put the windrow right in the center of that, because that basically just, you know, lo you lose less teeth than the baler. The baler actually uses pickup teeth to pick up these windrows, and the, the less stalks you have, the longer those teeth will last. And boy, the hawks are playing like crap. Cool. Just got the phone call from Curtis. Uh, this will be good enough. I've done, oof. A lot of windrows. This should be. This will keep him bailing most of the afternoon, probably almost to dark, because really you can rake a lot quicker. I rake for about two hours. It'll take him probably three times as long to bail, so probably six hours. So that's good. Daisy's been doing good. Found like a little lump or scab on the side of her stomach, so that's a little interesting. Let's see what that's about. Yes, yeah, so I'll go back, and then I don't have a whole lot of time left. Like I said, the wife and I got a date tonight, so I gotta leave here around two. The guys are uh, stringing pipes up over that leg. That should be finished up today. I'll drive over there. Uh, I'll uh, stop. I'll drive over and we'll stop right next to it and talk about that a little bit. And then hopefully uh, we got one kind of mine rolling on corn right now. Hopefully, we'll see. Alrighty, all done. Let's head back. Gows. And looks like Rhonda's here. The meal wagon. Well, uh, both grain carts are gone. Both combines are gone. Huh. Wonder where they're all at. I don't know. All I know is I got uh, Curtis's food with me. So that's a uh, bump. So I'll wait for him to get here. You can kind of see he's made it about three passes, three down and backs. So I'll wait for him and give him his food. But as you can see, the guys are stringing pipes. That crane right there is going to make that place much more efficient. So we used to only have, we had that leg in two downspouts for about three years now. And we've been talking about connecting the other two bins that are there, the other two 12,000 bushel bins, ever since they came. Because we want to make that our soybean hub. But the reason why we want to connect those, leg, those uh, bins to that leg is just because it's so much more efficient. Even though it's a slower leg and we can do it quicker by uh, that standalone auger that I was using yesterday, it's just the ease and the the efficiency we would gain just by not having to move an auger around not having to have three people to help move that one person can climb up to the distributor switch the spot and then be changing bins in about 30 seconds uh, probably two minutes as opposed to a half hour with three people two minutes with one people one person so it just it makes a lot of sense so that's the big reason why we're doing that we're really excited to have that crane here get that done finally finally going from the old one just had from that harvest store and our old wet bin those two right there now we have those two right here that are strung up so that's perfect appreciate the help guys and it's actually kind of neat yeah i'm sorry the window's dirty 
but it's really windy out, so I'm not gonna go out there and, and subject you guys to that, but there's a guy in a man lift on the crane just going through and tightening down hardware, inspecting, making sure it's good. I'll get some shots of him bailing. Yeah, the cattle are gonna love this stuff. See that windstorm and the, everything going to the right, to your guys' right? Let's uh, hop to the other side. And you see how he's zigzagging? The monitor tells him if he's feeling heavy left, heavy right, and there he adjusts from there. Fix it right up. And he's wrapping a bale too. You guys are gonna see one kicked out. There we are. Oh, there you are. Well, goodbye. Uh, what do you, where's everyone at? I guess where do they want me to go for a little bit? Give him a call. Oh. Unhooking the rake and then gonna park this truck and or not the truck, this tractor, go grab a bite to eat. And then call the boss man to plan us. Ah, I love the smell of drying corn. Even though it's not doesn't feel like a fall day. And it's like a high 86, which is like ridiculous. Still. Drying corn just smells amazing. My Aunt Paula's, Paula's around today. Probably gonna clean up this place, pick up some stuff. There's the big grain cart, so I have no idea where everyone's at. There's your food and water. And here's my food. Oh, yes. So yum. My favorite dessert from Grandma. So Sean's gonna go fill that grain cart up with fuel, and then he's gonna go head down and go start running a cart for Nathan. What you think, Daisy? What you think? So it's 115 right now. I gotta take off shortly, but I think I'm gonna check the wet bin, check the dry bin, see what those levels are. Head, uh, go get that pickup from Long's. That's uh, left up there. I think Ron and I are gonna go do that. And then I'm gonna go down to the South Farm, check those bins and then jump that tractor, get that thing going. So let's go. Pat is harvesting his soybeans right here. Just getting these knocked out. And he's gonna go back and switch over to corn. Nathan is down South running some corn. And now Ron and I are gonna go pick up a uh, truck that's been sitting out in the field.